So a famous quote by MacLean, adjoint functors arise everywhere. So let's take a look at the definition. Let F and G be functors. Notice the direction they're going. They're going in opposite directions. We say that F is left adjoint to G and G is right adjoint to F. And we're gonna write that like this. If we have this nice isomorphism, naturally in A and in B, which I'll explain later. Uh, you might be thinking, what does this natural, or what does this isomorphism mean? Well, these are Hom sets. They live in the category of sets. What is an isomorphism in this category? It's just a bijection. So we'll get to that in a second. An adjunction between F and G is a choice of natural isomorphism. So another thing you might be thinking, well, natural isomorphism, that's just natural transformation too. But isn't that for functors that are going in the same direction? And you'd be right. So we have, in other words, um, F and G are adjoint. And this is if and only if the following functors Following functors, which are going from dual of A cross B into the category of sets, are naturally isomorphic. So don't get too bogged down about this right now, but this shows you these are two functors, they're going in the same direction and that's where it makes more sense if we're talking about a natural isomorphism right here. So say we had uh, our category A and our category B over here. Say that A lives in here. So the functor F is going to take this to F of A. Say we have a B living in the category B. The functor G is going to take this to G of B, which lives in A. So with, a, with an adjunction, what we're really saying is a map from A to G of B is the same as a map from F of A to B. And what do we mean by naturally in A? So naturally in A pretty much means we have that for any uh, map, call it H, going into A, so let's say A prime to A. So any map going into A, we have this. A prime to A to G of B. And don't forget this is in our category A. is the same as uh, f of a prime taken to f of a taken to b and don't forget this is in our category b is 
that make sense? So naturally just means that it works well with composition like that. Uh, naturally in B is similar definition as well. Um, let's look at a really simple example. So we're going to start with uh, two really easy categories. Uh, so we've got the category of real numbers. So objects are the reals and the morphisms Are, let's say there's a morphism from X to Y when X is less than or equal to Y. So there's a morphism from 3 to 4 because 3 is less than or equal to 4, but there's no morphism from 4 to 3. Does that make sense? So the category of the integers is defined the same way. So say we have the integers and the reals. So these are our two categories. We're going to have a functor, call it i for inclusion. And in the opposite direction, we're going to have a functor, call it f for the floor function. So i is for inclusion. F is the typical floor function. So from this example, we have that I is left adjoint to F. So writing it down for like this isomorphism, we have this such a thing. This is for A, an integer, and B, a real number. So, to kind of get the feeling of this, if A were to be a uh, 2, uh, and B were to be something like pi, then, so here's our category of, category of integers, here's the reals, here's two, the inclusion functor is going to map two, to i of 2, which is just 2, and b is pi, the floor function functor is going to map pi to the floor of pi, which is just 3. So this adjunction says that a map here is the same as a map there. So in other words, uh, so this says that for A, an integer, and B, a real number that A is less than or equal to the floor of B and this is if and only if A is less than or equal to B. 
So this is kind of a cool thing to see, and it's really simple using just these adjoint functors.